I I don't know where to begin. The cutting a chicken in half. The the round where two people died and we had to call in a replacement. Never had to do that before. We do an AI tournament every now and again, which uh, I'm now dubbing Mortal Kombat chat. It made it easy for the puns. I don't know. What we're going to be doing is putting chat up against each other in 1v1 fights with super fight abilities and narrated by an AI system. So all of chat, or at least most of them in here at the moment, have submitted characters, fighters. Because I'm a nerdy developer, I've written a system that will generate two super fight traits for each person. These could be positive traits, like super strength. These could be negative traits, like missing a leg. Or these could be just downright absurd traits, like they can't stop clapping. The rules of the fight are simple. It's three hits confirmed, or a confirmed kill, and that person progresses. The winner will receive a bit of applause. Absolutely nothing, but a bit of applause. This is the real treasure, not the friends you make along the way, after all. So I can't see what's on your Mario calendar. There it is. I like the little coins for the days. Uh, I'm going to get the coins for the days. Uh, no, I'm going to get the coins for the days. I'm going to check the entrance. If we win, we get coins for days. <laughs> That'll be your reward. If you want coins for days, I can do that. I will send you a picture of a coin every day for a week. You know what? I'm feeling generous. At least two pictures of a coin per day. This is novel AI. This is what we're going to use to create our fights. This is our bracket. We should add Chicken Boy. <laughs> Everybody in this bracket has chosen a weapon. Chicken Boy's weapon will be a bucket of chicken. Each fight they take part in, their two traits will be completely regenerated. With one round, you might be on fire, literally, and the next round, you might just not be able to stop clapping or something like that. There might also be environmental factors. I have some standard intro text, which is customized lightly. And then, yeah, we're just going to fight it out 1v1. Uh, Cyrus is the defending champion, then won't be taking part, but is the defending champion. Hey, editor. Here. In case you didn't know, Cyrus is like the villain of our channel. He's basically the persona we've given to all negative things like tech issues and things like that. I hate him, chat hates him, and for good reason, to be honest. I'm worried Cyrus will be angered by his inability to defend his title and will just crash the party. Can you stop summoning Cyrus? The, I swear to God, OBS is always only one light breeze away from falling over. We don't need like more reason for it to die. The way we'll go through this is we'll work from the left hand side down and then the right hand side down and then we'll, we'll do that in each round. The first matchup will be Vasily versus Jenki. Vasily arrives wielding the Black Dragon Spear as their weapon. Vasily is guarded by Darth Vader, and Vasily is allergic to failure. Jenki arrives wielding a bow and arrow as their weapon. Jenki is balancing on a circus ball, and their left leg is actually a wizard. <laughs> the fight to the death is about to take place in a jungle. After several minutes of fighting, they both get tired and fall over. They notice that one of them has lost an arm, and the other has lost... a head. I guess I won, says Jenki. This is exactly what I'm talking about, AI. You can't just say, I guess I won and make that it. We do this is not how we do things, okay? Okay, we're gonna try again. Chat, we are going again. Vasily rushes at Jenki with his spear held high above his head. Jenki shoots an arrow which hits Vasily square in the chest. He falls back and clutches his wound. Jenki shoots another arrow and this time hits Vasily in the face. Jenki shoots yet again and this time hits Vasily in the stomach. We have our winner, Jenki progresses. The next one that doesn't have a buy is Sock Slinger versus Fighter Boy. Sock Slinger arrives wielding a rock in a sock as their weapon, has laser eyes and is 10 feet tall. Wow. Fighter Boy arrives wielding a shotgun as their weapon. Fighter Boy can blow 200 mile an hour winds and has a beard made of bees. The fight to the death is about to take place at Hogwarts. Both fighters throw themselves into combat with great force, smashing into one another with their weapons. They're locked together for what feels like an eternity. Sock Slinger and Fighter Boy are fighting to the death. Sock Slingers, yeah, no, we know this. They're fighting to the death. Oh no, is it going to just repeat itself? Okay, this is very shining right now. All work and no play make, make AI a dull boy, yeah? Okay, I, I, okay, okay, okay. This is how the fight begins. I'm not sure if you've noticed, says Sock Slinger, but it's raining out here. Yeah, well, I don't really care, says Fighter Boy. This is the worst trash talk I've ever heard. He shrugs his shoulders and walks off into the distance. <laughs> Fighter Boy follows him. Where do you think you're going? I thought you'd want to go home now that your girlfriend's gone. So why don't you come with me? My girlfriend? 
asked Fighter Boy, surprised. Yeah, that's right. You see, when we were kids, we used to play together. But then she moved away. And since then, every time I see her, she's got a new boyfriend. And I always try to talk to her, but she never wants to listen. God, there's some serious drama here. Okay, we're going to redirect the AR back onto track a little bit. Fighter Boy considers the situation. He charges at Sock Slinger. Well, you see, I was thinking maybe I should show you where she lives. And then you could kill her for me. What? No, no, this is not happening. Fighter Boy pulls the trigger on the shotgun, blasting Sock Slinger in the chest. Sock Slinger falls to the ground and lies there motionless. Fighter Boy looks over at Sock Slinger and notices a small hole in his shirt. He looks up to the sky and sees a bird flying overhead, carrying a stone in its mouth. Fighter Boy smiles and laughs. Stop going back to the girlfriend murder. Fighter Boy fires his gun at Sock Slinger, hitting him in the head. That's two. Sock Slinger looks up at Fighter Boy and says, let's take a break from each other. You mean stop being friends? You're not friends. You are not friends. Looks up at Fighter Boy and aims the rock in the sock. The rock hits Fighter Boy in the head. He falls over unconscious. Sock Slinger stands up and kicks Fighter Boy in the stomach. I'm going to kill you now. Sock Slinger raises the shotgun and shoots Fighter Boy in the back. Fighter Boy falls to the ground and doesn't move. Our winner is Sock Slinger. Because Impish has gone to get dinner, we're going to do Plant Boy versus Wall. Plant Boy arrives wielding a cactus. Plant Boy is carrying way too many grocery bags and they can't seem to get a knot untied. Wall arrives wielding a brick as their weapon. Wall can only see their opponent when they move and they can't stop sobbing. <laughs> the fight to the death is about to take place on a dessert island, which looks des delicious. But on this occasion, the temperature is ridiculously low. Maybe it's frozen dessert, I guess. Plant Boy uses his cactus like an oversized club. He swings hard with all of his might and Wall dodges out the way, narrowly avoiding being hit by the cactus. But then again, Wall doesn't have any arms. Wall charges forward, swinging their brick with great force. But how do they swing it if they don't have any arms? Plant Boy ducks under the brick and hits Wall right in the face with the back end of the cactus. Plant Boy stands over Wall, who is lying on the ground, crying uncontrollably. <laughs> Plant Boy takes advantage of the situation and begins beating up Wall mercilessly. Wall tries desperately to stand up, but Plant Boy continues hitting them with the cactus, eventually breaking off chunks of the plant and throwing them at Wall. Plant Boy is having fun now, laughing hysterically as he beats up Wall. Plant Boy walks away victoriously victorious while Wall lies there in pain, unable to move. And Plant Boy is through to the second round. Did Plant Boy just beat up someone crying to start with? Yes, they did. Absolutely brutal. But that kind of brutality is exactly what you need to make it through to the second round. And Plant Boy is through to the second round. Okay, Impish versus Chicken Boy is next. Impish arrives wielding a machete. Chicken Boy arrives wielding a bucket of chicken as their weapon. So we've got Impish who can transfigure into any animal or Mike Tyson at will. And then we've got Chicken Boy who's one foot tall and can sprint quicker than the Flash. This is an image of Chicken Boy run... Th what? This is an image of Chicken Boy running towards Impish with his bucket of chicken. They both have a machete each. <gasps> chicken Boy has withdrawn the machete out of the bucket of chicken. They all thought that Chicken Boy's only weapon was the chicken. But the the machete has been drawn out of the bucket of chicken. The fight to the death has begun. Chicken Boy throws the bucket of chicken at Impish, who dodges out of the way and then runs back at Chicken Boy. Chicken Boy tries to throw another bucket of chicken at Impish, but he misses. Impish quickly grabs Chicken Boy by the neck and lifts him into the air. Chicken Boy struggles for breath as they're held up high above Impish's head. Impish swings their machete down onto Chicken Boy's head, severing it clean off. Impish drops Chicken Boy to the ground where it lies still and dead. Impish turns away and walks away slowly. <laughs> chicken boy lying there um i mean that was quick <laughs> that was quick all right cool good fight don't mess with impish right this is one-sided massacre isn't it they sliced the head clean off from the top down so it wasn't even like a like a clean cut it was bringing the machete down onto their head so they kind of cleaved it in twain it's like one of those scenes where like the head will get cut in half and then it just kind of peels apart absolutely brutal quarterfinal Siege versus Jenki. Siege arrives wielding a sword made from the souls of his enemies. Siege is 10 foot tall and they can summon enough strength to lift Thor's hammer. However, Siege's sword can talk and it hates him. Jenki arrives wielding a bow and arrow. Jenki can breathe underwater and tends to fall over for like no reason. But on this occasion, both fighters' weapons disappear and cannot be used to like real life. Yeah, it's just a fight. <laughs> Siege charges in with his sword held high. As he gets closer, however, he notices something strange. 
the blade isn't moving. He looks up to see Jenki holding her bow and arrow, which she'd been using to shoot arrows at him all along. She fires another arrow. Siege dodges the arrow and heavily strikes Jenki across the face with the sword. Siege laughs at her misfortune before lunging forward with his sword again. But this time, Jenki dodges the attack and shoots an arrow straight into Siege's chest. Siege falls backwards onto the ground. His sword has fallen from his hand, but the wound is too deep. He dies. Jenki stands there in shock. Her arrow still lodged in Siege's chest. Well, aim for the heart, Ramon. Always aim for the heart. The, the, the sword made of souls didn't even get to talk. It didn't even get to throw a snarky quip. Just one killer arrow straight to the heart. Absolutely incredible. The next fight will be Peckford Peckerton, submitted by Cobble Wobbles against Soxlinger. Peckford arrives wielding nunchucks made of steel sausages. They tend to fall over for like no reason, and they're drunk. <laughs> Against Sockslinger, arriving wielding a rock in a sock as their weapon. They get distracted by shiny things, and they're on fire. The fight to the death is about to take place in space, but on this occasion, both fighters exist outside of space and time. Peckford dodges the first attack from Slinger, using the metal nunchucks to block the rock. The two begin to circle one another, looking for an opening in which they can strike. Peckerton swings the nunchucks towards Sockslinger's head, only for Sockslinger to duck under and swing the rock up at Peckerton's face. Peckerton ducks and rolls, avoiding the rock and landing on his feet. Sockslinger charges forward, but Peckford Peckerton sidesteps and swings the nunchucks upward, catching Sockslinger in the chest and sending him flying through the air. Peckford jumps onto Sockslinger's prone body, preparing to end the fight right there. But then, Sockslinger sits up, still holding the rock in its sock. Peckerton looks at the rock, confused. Sockslinger smiles at him, then throws the rock at Peckerton's face. Peckerton dodges the rock, but not in time to avoid being hit by it. So you didn't really dodge the rock, you tried to dodge the rock, is what happened there. The rock hits Peckford Peckerton square in the forehead, knocking him unconscious. Sockslinger picks up Peckerton's nunchucks, admiring them for a moment, before throwing them away. Then he takes Peckford Peckerton's hat off his head and puts it on himself. With Peckford Peckerton out cold, Sockslinger has won the- no, no, what is that? I'm sorry I don't speak English, says the man. Wait, that's English, what? what? What is, what is this? Okay, throwing them away, and we're gonna go from there. Sock Slinger picks up the rock in the sock, then walks over to Peckerton and places the rock in the middle of his face. What is he gonna do, stamp on it? Sock Slinger takes the sock off, revealing a pair of scissors in it instead. But okay, we're gonna be done there. That's three. That's that's game over. I'm, I'm prepared to just give that. Give that to Sock Slinger. Sock Slinger wins. We don't need to, that's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. That's, that's, no, don't, no, oh, oh, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> oh my god, okay, I guess the AI kind of went, look, if you're sick of me making friends, let's f fight, well, I don't know if it can get much more brutal than that, the next fight in the quarterfinals will be T versus Impish. Some safety goggles. <laughs> I'm not sure that'll help if we're ending fights with a, a machete in minutes. I, I don't know if goggles are going to help you. T arrives wielding a teapot full of scalding hot tea as their weapon. T can throw infinite blocks of cheese and is riding a Segway. Impish arrives wielding a machete as their weapon. Impish is accompanied by Hermione Granger and there appears to be three of Impish. The fight to the death is about to take place at a supermarket. They begin swinging wildly at one another, but neither manages to land any hits. Several minutes until... We're gonna go from there. They both stop moving and fall over dead. Okay. Um, I mean, Chicken Boy can't come back because Chicken Boy is very dead. Both of the fighters have died. It means nobody has progressed, which means we need someone to come in and take their place. Only one person can possibly take on such a heavy task, such a strong burden, and it's me. It's here be Kush. Apparently, I don't even know what my weapon is yet. Chat, I'm gonna need you to suggest some weapons in the chat, and then we're gonna put a poll up and vote on what my weapon is. Siege's sword. Oh my God, what if Kush turns up wielding the sword? A chainsaw gun? Jesus Christ, you guys are, you guys are imaginative. I like this. How is a Formula One car a weapon? How do I wield that? Okay, Kush's weapon. A chainsaw gun. Siege's soul sword. A toy F1 car. A spreadsheet, or is it going to be puns so bad they literally hurt? It's Siege's Soul Sword. I love this story arc. I love this story arc. All right, next fight Moz versus Plant Boy.
Moz arrives wielding Ban, the hammer, as their weapon. Moz slows down time when their eyes are closed, and they can change between their normal form and E.T. at will. Plant Boy arrives wielding a cactus as their weapon, and they have supersonic hearing, and their left leg is actually a hockey player. The fight to the death is about to take place at the end of the world. They circle each other, both trying to find an opening to strike first. Both decide to use their secret weapons. Moz uses their ability to slow time. Plant Boy uses their ability to turn into an alien. Wait, what? Their, their body becomes small and light enough to float through the air, giving them the edge they need to attack Moz before they can react. The tension builds until Mo suddenly Moz leaps forward and swings their hammer. It hits Plant Boy square in the chest, sending him flying back. Moz quickly follows after him, swinging again, but Plant Boy is already gone. He turns invisible and floats away. Moz continues swinging their hammer wildly. They don't realize that Plant Boy has disappeared. They run straight into the wall behind them. They fall backwards and land hard on the ground. Moz looks up and sees Plant Boy standing above them. I'm your worst nightmare. How did you do that? That's what I want to talk about. No, you are going so well, AI. Why are you doing this? Why does this have to be? No, 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 no. I'm your worst nightmare. That's all right. I've got a hammer that can crush you like a bug and I've got a cactus that can stab you like a needle. Oh yeah, well my hammer can also make things grow really big. Your cactus can't do that. My cactus can do whatever I want it to do. <laughs> and what can your hammer do? Well, I can fly, so I'll just fly over there and smash you into pieces. Ha, that's funny because I'm faster than you and I can go wherever I want to go. Guys, stop arguing and start fighting. <laughs> so you say, but I have a special surprise for you. With that, Moz starts to slow down time. No, don't do that, cries Plant Boy, but Moz keeps slowing time. Please stop, screams Plant Boy, but Moz keeps slowing time. I won't let you win, shouts Plant Boy, but Moz keeps slowing time. <laughs> I honestly don't know why I found that so funny, but it's just the idea of repeatedly slowing time as almost like a f you. Oh my god, I'm literally crying. Okay, why are you doing this to me? Why are you making me suffer? Screams Plant Boy. But Moz keeps slowing time. Just kill me now. But Moz keeps slowing time. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm so done. I'm just, I'm broken. Is this just gonna go on forever? But Moz keeps slowing time until time is fully stopped. They both start swinging hammers at each other. They're about to hit when they notice a strange thing happening. What's the strange thing? The hammer seems to be growing bigger and bigger. They seem to get bigger and bigger. Soon the hammers are so large they can no longer see each other. What the fuck is this fight? Okay, we're we're in we're in all work and no play territory again now. So I'm gonna crush you, shouts Moz. They lunge at each other and the fight continues. The two of them suddenly realize something. The hammers aren't getting larger anymore. In fact, they're starting to shrink back to their original sizes. Everything is returning to normal. The hockey player on Plant Boy's leg shoots a puck directly at Moz. Moz dodges it by jumping out of the way. Plant Boy tries to shoot another puck but misses because he's distracted. No, not not oh sorry, you're trying to kill each other. I should have killed you already, screams Plant Boy. He swings his hammer at Moz, who ducks under it. With a single swipe from its tail, Moz slices off Plant Boy's hockey stick. They also realize that Plant Boy is limping. They continue fighting before Moz finally gets the upper hand. They slash Plant Boy across the face and cut him open. Moz takes advantage of this momentary distraction to slice Plant Boy's head clean off. Wow. Well, holy hell. What a battle that was. Moz makes their way through. But first, we have Jenki versus Soxlinger. Jenki slows down time when their eyes are closed and they can breathe fire. Soxlinger has a regenerating shield and supersonic hearing. The fight to the death is going to take place inside a coliseum. They both draw their weapons and charge straight for one another, but then stop suddenly as they realize they've forgotten something very important. Oh god, who will be the referee? Both combatants turn around and walk away from each other. The coliseum empty except for an old man with a walking stick. Let's see where it's going with this. What? Says Jenki. You want us to fight without a referee? No, says the old man. Wait, I am the referee. Begin! We can keep the it was a dark and stormy night, but we're not having the random cats entered in. Jenki was hiding under the bed of a small boy named Jason. Jason woke up and found Jenki. He's, no, no, this is getting weird. We're not. No, no. They begin their fight. The old man whistles again. And with that, Jenki and Sock Slinger begin to fight. 
Jenki is fighting a giant. No, you're not fighting a giant sport spider. Jenki shoots an arrow at Sock Slinger, who swings their rock in a sock at Jenki. Jenki dodges the rock by slowing down time and breathing fire at Sock Slinger. Jenki uses this opportunity to shoot several arrows at Sock Slinger, but Sock Slinger blocks them with their shield, which is now regenerating. Sock Slinger swings their rock in a sock at Jenki, who stops time again and breathes fire. Sock Slinger throws their rock in a sock. Okay, the, right. I think you're doing the same thing over and over again. This causes Sock Slinger's regeneration to fail momentarily and gives Jenki enough time to throw her bow and arrow into Sock Slinger's face. With nowhere else left to go, Sock Slinger throws their rock in a sock back at Jenki, hitting a square in the chest. As she falls backward, Jenki closes her eyes and slows down time yet again. She opens them just in time to see Sock Slinger running towards her. Jenki grabs hold of Sock Slinger's leg and pulls it outwards. It's not a hit, it's a pull. It's a tactical maneuver. At first, Sock Slinger seems confused as to what has happened until Jenki hits their knee with an elbow strike. Sock Slinger screams in pain and drops their rock in a sock. Their regeneration kicks in and they quickly pick up the rock and swing it at Jenki's head. But before they they can hit her. Jenki runs in behind Sock Slinger and punches their stomach. Sock Slinger stumbles forward and trips over themselves, causing them to fall onto their knees. Jenki takes advantage of this momentary weakness and stabs Sock Slinger right through the heart. Oh my god. There it is, chat. Game over. Jenki with some really brutal finishes, shooting one arrow at, at Siege, just straight through the heart, using what I assume was an arrow this time to stab Sock Slinger in the heart. Who is going to face Jenki in the final? It's Kush versus Moz. The winning tactic is going to be Moz slow down time. <laughs> Kush arrives wielding a sword made from the souls of Siege's enemies as their weapon. Kush can clone himself, but each clone is half the size of the previous clone, and Kush is 10 feet tall. Moz arrives wielding Ban, the hammer, as their weapon. Moz can't <laughs> stop laughing, and they can breathe fire. So th that's just an unwieldy load of fire. The fight to the death is play taking place in the eye of a tornado, but on this occasion, both fighters exist outside of space and time. Kush uses his clones to attack Moz while he tries to find an opening with his sword. He attacks one of Moz's clones and slices its head off. Moz, you have clones. The clone falls to the ground dead. Kush moves onto another clone and slashes its neck open. Another clone drops to the floor. This continues until there are no more clones left. Kush has used all of his clones. Moz laughs hysterically and breathes fire at Kush. Kush dodges the flames and swings his sword into Moz's face. Moz dodges the blow and punches Kush in the chest, knocking him back. Kush lands on the ground and Moz jumps on him, landing several blows before Kush manages to roll away and stand up. We do Several, we don't know the number, so it's 2-0. Kush lunges at Moz, but misses. Moz hits Kush again, this time in the stomach, which knocks Kush over. And just like that, just like that, Moz picks up the win. That was easy for Moz. I got eliminated. Moz versus Jenki. This is the grand final of the tournament. It is Jenki versus my moderator, Moz. Is it going to be a rigged tournament? Is the mod going to win? But then again, the mod beat the streamer in the semi-final. So it can't be rigged, right? It can't be rigged. Jenki can breathe underwater and they can't seem to get a knot untied. Moz can blow 200 mile an hour winds and they can become any animal. The fight to the death is about to take place at the North Pole. Jenki has the upper hand in the fight. She can shoot an arrow underwater, which will kill her opponent instantly if it hits them. Okay. Her opponent, however, can use the wind to blow away her arrows before they reach them, allowing them to attack without fear of being shot. On top of this, Moz can transform into any animal they wish, making it difficult for Jenki to predict where they will be next. Finally, Moz can breathe underwater, but okay, <laughs> meaning they can stay submerged indefinitely. All these factors make Jenki's odds of winning quite slim. That turned around very quickly. Their ability to change into any animal allows them to dodge attacks easily, while also giving them the ability to sneak up behind their opponent undetected. Their 200 mile an hour winds allow them to push back Jenki's attacks. Jenki and Moz are evenly matched. Moz transforms into a large fish. Swimming beneath the surface of the water, Jenki, who cannot see underwater, is unable to locate her opponent and thus loses track of them. Suddenly, Jenki hears a loud splash. Her opponent has transformed into a shark. Moz is a shark, ladies and gents. Jenki dives underwater to escape the shark, but finds herself cornered by the creature. Why would you go... She tries to shoot an arrow at the shark, but the shark knocks it aside with its tail. As Jenki sleeps deeper and sinks deeper into the sea, she begins to panic. Even worse news comes in the form of a giant squid attacking Jenki. Fortunately, Moz is able to defeat the beast, saving Jenki once again. <laughs> no, you're not saving your opponent. What's with this friendship? Fortunately, Jenki shoots down the squid with one arrow, saving herself. Jenki runs towards the shore, hoping to find safety. Just as she reaches land, she sees Moz standing right beside her. Moz uses the wind to knock away Jenki's arrow. Worse yet, 
yet. Jenki doesn't have the strength to run anymore. Instead, she just stands there. But something strange occurs. Moz turns into a whale, diving deep below the whale, the waves. In order to avoid the whale, Jenki dives underwater, but she soon discovers that she isn't strong enough to keep breathing. What is this cat and mouse game? She continues to struggle against her fate, trying desperately not to let herself sink. Then suddenly, she feels a tugging sensation on her leg. It was Moz pulling her, no, not towards the surface, towards the bottom of the ocean, trying to kill her. You guys have forgotten that you're fighting. Eventually, Moz releases hold on Jenki, and Jenki emerges from the water, gasping for air. Jenki retreats across land, through the snow, to try and formulate a plan of how to defeat Moz. When she finally arrives at the top of a hill, she spots Moz flying overhead. They land nearby, transforming themselves into a bear. Jenki immediately draws out her sword and prepares to attack. Before she can strike, Moz charge changes into a wolf and leaps onto her back, knocking the blade from her hand. Jenki attempts to stab the beast, but Moz jumps off, leaving Jenki alone atop the snowy slope. She decides to make a break for it, running downhill until she eventually falls into a ravine. Jenki hears a voice calling her name. She turns to look up, seeing Moz floating above her. He tells her that he loves her. No! Who moves in for the kill. Jenki grabs a rock and throws it at the beast, hitting it square in the face. After only six paragraphs, it's 1-0. They get up and charge toward Jenki. Jenki quickly pulls out another stone and hurls it at the monster. Once more, it hits Moz dead center in the forehead. They stumble backwards, falling over a cliff and plunging hundreds of feet into the canyon below. Jenki watches in horror as Moz disappears behind a waterfall. Moz transforms into a bird and flies high above Jenki. They circle around her several times, making sure that Jenki won't be able to hit them. After circling around for quite some time, Jenki gets tired of being circled by the enemy, so she takes aim and shoots at Moz. Her shot goes wide, missing its target completely. Jenki tries again, this time aiming directly at Moz's head. Again, her arrow misses, causing the bird to fly higher, further away from Jenki. Jenki keeps shooting, each attempt getting farther away from her target. Moz dives down toward Jenki. Landing right between her legs. No. No. Landing right beside her. As they do, Jenki realizes that she has no idea where to shoot them. So she runs away, hoping to find somewhere else to hide. Moz follows closely behind, keeping pace with her movements. Soon they reach a small clearing near the edge of the forest. Here, Jenki finds a large chi branch that she could use to swing on. She swings on it, holding on tightly. Moz appears from nowhere, grabbing onto her arm and swinging her off balance. They both tumble to the ground, rolling along the grassy terrain. Moz climbs to their feet once more. They lunge forward, attempting to grab her throat. Suddenly, Jenki kicks them in the stomach, sending Moz tumbling backwards and losing their grip on her neck. Jenki quickly rushes to her fallen opponent, drawing a dagger out and stabbing it straight into Moz's chest. Jenki wins. Jenki wins the tournament. Bam, with the win. Congratulations on your win. With all of that, I, I don't know where to begin. The cutting a chicken in half, the, the round where two people died and we had to call in a replacement. Never had to do that before. Yeah, so thanks for joining me on this. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching through YouTube. And uh, yeah, follow me on Twitch and have a great day.